OK, so first I'm going to give a quick 30 second overview of exactly why we made Skimit. And I've just come back from Hong Kong for the last three years because I was living and working out there. And my business partner was here in London. We were actually working on a different startup. And during this process of doing it, we were always sharing links with each other. And it was just getting so archaic that we had so many resources where he was asking me to look here, he was asking me to look there. And we saw a big problem with information overload and being able to store the stuff that you find online in one simple, you know, formatable place. So we started working on Skimit and we, um, we've built a way to really simply um, save, sort and share the best things you find online. So without further ado, let me log in. No problem. Okay, so among coming in the site, you have your profile page, and this is completely customizable. And what the point of the site is, is when you log in for the first time, you're asked to install a Skimit button. And this is, you just simply drag this up to your bookmarks tool, which I'll do for you now. Let me just install this first. So, as I'm browsing the web, I find an article that I'm interested in. And I want to be able to save this and put it in one place where I can read it for later and also share with others. So with the Skimit button, all you need to do is press it and it will generate a summary with an algorithm that we've built that identifies the most relevant information within that article and produces a hundred word summary to take the best bits out so that you know exactly what was a part of that article. Now from that, we create uh, spaces called online canvases, which are um, similar to Pinterest boards. And this is the place where you actually store them and categorize them within topics so that you can organize it for again later. So within my canvases, I'm just going to put this into Great Weeds. I'm going to say this is great. And I'm going to skim it. And a little milk bottle takes the, the top off and you're left with the best bit. And then that's finally skimmed to your canvas. My profile page looks like this. It's very visual pleasing. You have your canvases. And then the one I've just skimmed will be now be in Great Reads. There it is one minute ago. And then it shows me the summary of what I've just found. Now from this, I can add my thoughts to it like I did, share it within social networks. It references the source of where I got it from. And then the canvas really, then I can add collaborators. So just simply by an email address, someone who's like-minded, who has interest in the topics that I'm skimming, I can invite them in, they just accept it, and then we can skim and collaborate together on certain topics. To make a new canvas, all you do is just press canvas name, put in test, Test again, and the canvas gets created. So in the following section, it will just show me a feed of other people's skims that they're reading, and this is a way for me to discover interesting things online without having to really go to all these separate websites because I get this short summary and synopsis of what was actually on that website. And then from that, I can skim it to mine. I can add my thoughts to it as well. And then going back to the canvases to then quickly reference if you wanted to find something that you skimmed earlier, all you need to do is type sport and then you'll be able to get all your skins straight away just by typing anywhere on the page and that's it I, I sort of am struggling to see where you sit between uh the read it later pocket world and the summary news world i can see that it makes perfect sense for something like Sumly to summarize and use an algorithm to try and figure out what's relevant to you before you've read the article so you can see if you're interested in it or not. And I can see the value in something like Pocket where you see something that looks like it might be relevant and you save it to read it yourself later. But if I am a person who is a blogger or sharing it with my friends, then I would expect to summarize why I think my friends are interested in it myself rather than have an algorithm do it. So I'm sort of struggling to see why I would use an algorithm to summarize it for my friends or to summarize it for myself to read later. Well, we try and save the, the, the task of having to always click back and go to different resources and remember why you did it in the first place. If you've saved something on Pocket, you generally save the whole web page. And then you have to go back and you have to read why you saved that web page and remind yourself by reading the whole thing. What the algorithm does is take the most relevant information from patterns and natural language processing throughout the whole reading of you being on the web and then process that into a summary so that you can quickly refer to that to try and eliminate the information overload. And with regards to where does it pocket and where does it meet, what was the other one you said, sorry? Summary. Um, I think pocket we saw as, yes, an initial competitor for saving later, but once you save it, you can't do anything further with it and you can only refer back to it. 
And this is a way that you can save it, but also share it amongst like-minded individuals. So a perfect case study is people within teams, businesses, for example, that are all kind of researching around the same subject can also kind of see this in a very visual way. Looks great. Um, I was wondering, it strikes me as a sort of unitary file system folder structure that's quite flat, though. So if you have a piece of, you know, if you want to skim something that's in two canvases, do you have like a comma separator thing or have you thought about some kind of hashtagging for supporting um, like uh, multiple taxonomies on, on, con on a single piece of, on a single skim? There's no tagging on skims at the moment. We're, we're introducing tagging within canvases so you can quickly, that they can be referenced within Google search engines so people can identify the canvas. And as we see it, you know, you can skim things, the same content to different canvases, not just to the same. But the way we see it is the canvas being a uh, prime example here. I have a canvas on Steve Jobs. And this is all the great stuff I've read about Steve Jobs throughout his life. And in a Google search result, I could get you know, millions of links around Steve Jobs, but if someone's humanly curated and done the research for me, I could just get this canvas as one link and open it up and have all the information I want on one page. And that's how we see the future of it evolving. Right, um, that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. So thank that's you very much. Yeah.